Hi, fourth graders. This week, we are going to read a story called Heat Wave. This is our third story in our theme. That's amazing. So remember, all the stories that we are reading in this theme have to do with things that are amazing. Not things that are amazing in like a good way, like when you say, oh, you did amazing on your science test, but things that are amazing, like things that could never really happen in real life. So today we're going to read another story about something amazing. This time, something amazing happens to happen on a farm. And so we're going to read our story preview page, which happens to be on page 358 and 359 in your hardcover reading book. And we're going to read this story preview page and go over our vocabulary words. So if you notice off to the side of the page in that yellow box, like always, we have our vocabulary words. We're going to be doing some practice with these words um, later today in our packet. And so the words that we have are affected, horizon, singe, temperature, and thermometer. And as always, they are highlighted in yellow when we read our story preview page so that you can use context clues to figure out their meanings. So what is a heat wave? Have you ever heard the saying, it's so hot you could fry an egg on the sidewalk? Sometimes the temperature soars so high it feels as if the sun could singe the hair on top of your head. When the weather is unusually hot and sticky for a long period of time, it is called a heat wave. Heat waves can last for a few days or as for as long as several weeks. They are caused when large masses of hot air get stuck over a particular region. And don't budge. These hot spells can send the thermometer to over 100 degrees. Such hot weather can be dangerous, even deadly. People, animals, and crops can all be seriously affected. For example, too much heat can make you sick by forcing your body to work extra hard. In the story you are about to read, one Kansas farm girl tries to save her farm from a heat wave that just may prove to be too hot to handle. And so if we read the captions here, we have sometimes the heat can play tricks on your eyes. Here, a dry road looks wet and the horizon appears blurred and wavy. And I'm sure you've witnessed this, fourth graders, on like a hot day if you're riding in the car with your parents or if you're looking out over some wide open area and it looks a little wavy or a little foggy or hazy, sometimes that can be from the heat in the air. And so here's some tips for beating the heat, heat, which is kind of funny to think about right now when we have weather in like the 20s and the 30s, but someday again, it will be warm. So it says to take it easy, avoid working or playing too hard, stay out of the sun and wear sunscreen, wear light colors, they bounce the, some of the sun's energy away from you. Even if you're not thirsty, drink lots of water. Your body needs water to cool down and make sure you eat lightly. So let's turn the page and, or let's not turn the page, sorry. Let's go over our vocabulary and then we're gonna turn the page and read our story. So here we have our list of those vocabulary words that we just talked about on our first page, our story preview page and their definitions. So we have the word miscalculated. Miscalculated means figured incorrectly. Affected means caused a change in. Temperature, measure of heat or coldness. Horizon, the line along which the earth and sky seem to meet. The word that got cut off there is meet. Weather vane, a movable pointer that shows the wind direction, and singe means to burn slightly. So make sure you remember these definitions and these words because you will have a workbook page that you will have to do um, with our vocabulary this week. All right, so let's get started reading our story. Our story takes, or our story starts on page 360. My big brother Hank used to tease me that girls couldn't be farmers, but he sure changed his tune the day the heat wave hit. I was feeding the chickens when I heard a loud roar. I looked out across the horizon and saw a big old clump of crinkled yellow air rolling across the sky. A flock of geese flew in one side and came out the other side, plucked, stuffed, and roasted. I hollered for Ma and Pa and Hank, but before they got outside, the heat wave hit. The mercury blasted out of the porch thermometer like a rocket. Ma's flowers pulled themselves up by their roots and crawled under the porch looking for shade. By the time everybody ran outside, the heat wave had gotten snagged on the barn's weather vane. It was near harvest time, so we raced to the cornfield to save what we could. But by the time we got there, it was already too late. The corn had started popping. It looked like a blizzard had hit. One of our old hound dogs turned blue and froze when he saw it. I wrapped him in a blanket, and he thought out okay. Then we heard a commotion in the pasture. We raced over. The cows were hopping around like rabbits. The ground had gotten too hot, so we herded them into the bar inside the barn. They still looked miserable, though. Pa figured their milk had gotten too hot, so we set to milking. As it turned out, the cows had jumped so much they'd turn their milk to butter. It came out melted. We'd milked the last of the butter when I had an idea. We scrubbed a couple of shovels in the beds of the pickup trucks. Then I set Pa and Hank to the field to fill up the pickup trucks with popcorn. 
When they were done, they brought the trucks around and we all pitched in and poured the butter over the popcorn. Then Hank and Ma drove the trucks to the drive-in movie down the road. In no time at all, they sold every last bit of that popcorn, then hurried home. We still had plenty of worries. We hurried to the field where we had our oats planted. Sure enough, they had dried out. I tried wetting them down, but that didn't turn out to be such a good idea. Soon I felt something slimy and thick rising up around my ankles. In another minute, it was waist high and I could barely move. Turned out I'd created a whole field of oatmeal. It was lumpy, just like Ma's, and I about drowned in the stuff. I dog paddled to the edge and crawled out. Woo-wee, that oatmeal was sticky. I told Pa we should bottle it, which we did later. It made fine glue. It was then that I caught a whiff of something burning. I followed my nose to the barn and hurried inside. The cows were steaming and their coats were starting to singe. Those poor critters were about to cook. We hosed them down and turned the fans on them. It helped, but not enough. Pa always said I was the quickest thinker in the family and I knew it was up to me to think of something else. I figured it was time to take on the heat wave. I thought blowing air on it would help, but we needed the fans for the cows. Besides, we didn't have near enough fans to cool the heat wave down. Then I had another idea. A huge flock of crows all beating their wings at once might work. One thing Kansas has plenty of, crows. And I knew how to get them to come. We dumped several 50 pound bags of flour and a bunch of yeast in the trough by the barn, then stirred the water with shovels. The dough rose so fast we had to run for our lives. It rolled over several chickens, then pick up the tractor and Sally the mule. Ended up big as the barn. A few minutes later, the dough started baking and the heat smelled awful good and that's when I was counting on. Crows can't resist the smell of baking bread and soon every crow in Kansas came flocking to the farm. Their wings made so much wind we had to tie ourselves around a giant tree trunk to keep from being blown away. It felt cooler already. The trouble was, those crows didn't keep flying. They lit on the bread and started eating. The temperature shot right back up and I figured we might be licked. The cows pecked at the bread until they freed Sally and the chickens. None of them were a bit worse for wear. In fact, they were right frisky. I figured all the yeast had caused their spirits to rise. Seeing Sally gave me one more idea. I told Pa to hitch her to the plow and she plowed up a section of land in record time. While Pa was plowing, I found what I needed. I gave everyone lettuce seeds and we started planting. Those seeds sprouted as soon as they hit the dirt. The bigger lettuce grew, the bigger the lettuce grew, the cooler the air got. That heat wave put up a fight all right. It rippled and twisted and squirmed like a bucking bronco, but the lettuce cooled the air more the he- more the air more the heat wave started shrinking until finally disappeared altogether. The weather vane in the barn cooled down and the cows stopped steaming too. They didn't even seem much affected except the fuzz on their hides never grew back. Ma had to knit them all sweaters for the winter. So that's how I saved the farm, by planting lettuce. In case you're wondering how lettuce could cool the air, it wasn't just any kind of lettuce, you see. It was iceberg lettuce. I did make one mistake though. I miscalculated the amount of lettuce I needed and planted too much. Kansas had an awful early snowfall that year, but none of us ever let on why. I hope you enjoyed the story, fourth graders. We're going to read about the author and the illustrator real quick since we have this page pulled up. So the author of our story is Helen Kediman. What would you do if you didn't have a television in your house? That's just how Helen Kediman grew up in a small Georgia town. Believe it or not, she says she is glad about that now. Instead of watching TV, she turned to books for entertainment. She also invented stories for her sisters and acted out plays for her neighbors. I know that the reason I'm a writer today is because I read so much as a a child, she says. Other books that she has written, maybe you've read them, are called Luck with Potatoes, The Year of No More Corn, Bubba and the Cowboy Prince. And our illustrator, Scott Gatto. Scott Gatto is certainly no stranger to heat waves. He lives in Hawaii, where hot weather is common. So it is no surprise that he did not have to do any weather research for his work on heat wave. When Gatto created his art for our children's book, he pretends he is the age of the reader. This isn't very hard, since a big part of me never grew up, says Gatto. I still love playing video games, watching cartoons, and buying toys. I hope you enjoyed our story today, fourth graders. Have a great rest of your day.